salve, friend. Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang on to the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. All right, see you around. Best behavior, I trust. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the Golden Rule, forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume we failed, and you had to start over. Is that about right? If so, what happened? Pluto's name, would you do that? You just wanted... What is wrong with you? Do you fancy yourself as mortar, holding the threads of our fate in your hands? Look, it's unfortunate, but all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you've sought me out again for a reason. Thank you. Up. Oh, another one fresh out of the bath. Oh, I wish her race. Oh, you heard about her disappearance, I take it. Yes, please do. Whatever are you... Oh, look, you're back. How lucky for me. What is it now? Oh, you... What? Really? I swear, I searched her room top to bottom and never saw that. I wonder how I could have missed it. Strange, but well done, I suppose. But it's odd. It was only a few months ago that Santilla's friend Yulia let slip she was planning an escape of her own. And yet, Yulia's still here. You should go and speak with her. Find out if she knows anything. She lives in the villa next door.
Ave. On your best behavior, I trust. What is it, citizen? Well, as I always say, it's kind of like a divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men, the idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone. And it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother-in-arms is planning a mutiny, well, you'd bloody well watch him like hundred-eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. It makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. What's done is done. I was forced to execute my brothers in arms, and those memories will always visit me in my sleep. But life is harsh, and I've come to accept my lot. As with the Golden Rule, I don't have any control over it. As Seneca the Younger wrote, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient for he that is so wants nothing. If you like, not that it's any of your business, but my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolus with lies, bribery, and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator, so people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolus. This place will be different with that sleaze at the helm. I suppose it is. What business is that of yours? A lot of people have been looking for her. But it's been three weeks, and we've found nothing. What makes you think you can do better? Hmm. I suppose that's true. Centilla was always a kind, well-behaved young woman. I admit. Her disappearance really caught me off guard. If anyone knows something, I'd expect it to be Sentia, Maliolus, Claudia, or Domitius. But none of them will tell me anything. You might fare better, though, I suppose. Fine. All right. Hey, Horatius. How does it feel knowing your man's doomed to lose the election today? trying to goad me into an argument. It won't work. I'm stoic, remember? If the old man couldn't even keep his own daughter safe, how can anyone trust him to keep us safe, eh? Why do I get the feeling you lot had something to do with Sentinel's disappearance? That's it. Blame everyone but yourself. If I find out you did something to that poor sweet girl, not even the Golden Rule is gonna protect you. Got it? <laughs> As if I'll be afraid of you, little man. Maliolus isn't receiving visitors at the moment. The name's Domitius. You want to get to Maliolus, you go through me. Why? Because I am a gladiator. That's why. You want to see me fight? Keep running your mouth, fatuous cunners. She's not here. Had to carry her to Lucretia's clinic this morning. Shrine of Apollo. She was acting sick. Faking it, if you ask me. Typical. I think it's gone on long enough, and Maliolus is going to put an end to it once he's elected. He's going to announce it in his victory speech. Just you wait and see. We've already lined up the votes he needs to win. Just stay out of our way, and we won't have a problem. Listen, I don't abduct women. They come to me. 
And they keep coming back, if you know what I mean. Too bad. He's busy. Unless... No. You don't look like you could afford it. I'm glad you asked. See, he's a busy man, and this is an important day. Left me strict instructions he doesn't want to be disturbed. So if you want to see him, I'll need something valuable in return. Bribe? That's such an ugly word. What I'm looking for is more of a... a tribute to me, your soon-to-be patron. Hey, Cap at Murday. Future RAS. Just make it good. Just make it good. Whatever. Isn't the great temple majestic? What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Kumulates Decius won't give it to me. Too late. She just slipped away. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of silphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Decius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here, with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her, or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule, or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that Silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day, or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetric Fututo and scratching his eyes out. Sure, what do you... Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule, and... So, maybe it's best we don't discuss it. Hemlock, I believe. I haven't seen her in months. She's not allowed to leave Maliolas' villa, and they are quite secretive. Uh, how did you know that? Yes, she did mutter something about the only way out. A few times. But nothing more than that, I'm afraid. 
Gladly. A city without sin might sound good on paper, but whoever dreamt it up didn't think it through. Maybe it was an attempt to create some kind of utopia. But snakes like Decius will always find loopholes to exploit. And what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing. In some ways, we are worse off because we can't take the law into our own hands. I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. This is Nevia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came. As he prepared to evacuate our villa, I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke, and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician, but she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good too, until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying, but I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her, because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem. A real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. I really shouldn't say. He wouldn't like it. And he's a little bit scary. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off. And I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. May Apollo keep you safe. <sighs> Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Can't talk long, got to stay sharp, but uh, family's from Seleucia on Tigris, Babylon province. But I've been Roman a long time now. Even joined the legions, the sixth, the one they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. If you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. Nobody is supposed to know about that. Did Lucretia tell you? Gah. Look, I haven't been at my best lately. All my joints ache constantly, and 
And the pain... It has a way of messing with your head. I get stirred up by things that shouldn't bother me. And, and then there's the statues. And my doubts about my faith. And I just... I just want to scream. You want to help me? Do what Lucretia hasn't been able to do. Welcome to my Cambi store. me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? Then you are an explorer, like me. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? My story? How kind of you to ask. A good question. A very good question indeed, and I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares, and droning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, God knows how many miles from my villa. Of course, of course. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the Golden Rule, and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the Golden Rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? Anything you like. That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleolus. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. But of course... Shh! Not so loud! Have you not been told about the last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Aha! You are witty! I like that! Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is... How do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high. But if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. They have! I am getting to that. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They 
They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard the godlike voice sink the entire city. And that, tragically, is where their tale ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of Earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. If we are to survive, I say we must each keep the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. Regrettably, I think you are correct, my friend. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. Ah, the voice of experience. I am sorry for your loss, my friend. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the Golden Rune. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing. Do they not? <laughs> I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend.